Got to build up my top rail at the bottom. I've got some of this material. It's a lot of different material, eighth inch, quarter inch. Cause I've got to get up to build up to three quarters to build my top rail right here. So I usually will start with uh, just get one set in there and I do it at first with just a nail gun, a little Brad inch long nail. Try to keep it in this half inch right here so it doesn't go peeking inside and messing up my interior. So I'm gonna do that real quick. I'm sure I'll go slow at first and then Russ will double time it until I have something important to say. last one on so I'm going to change out to my staple gun I got some uh, half inch staples in here I put this last one on and now that they're only half inch staples and I'm three quarters of an inch out I could go on to here where I'm really limited to this first half inch with these nails that were not very cooperative I'll pull those before I put the skin on so I can put this on here and just go right through the middle and then that'll give it even more make it more solid more sturdy and i'm going to put a little more than i would normally put with the brad nail of the staples so what i'll do now is in here i'm going to cut some Half, or no, three quarter inch rigid foam insulation. And then where this curves right here, I'm gonna have to curve it, curve it. So I'm gonna take these measurements, I'll cut it, I'll show you what I'm gonna do. So what I have ascertained is that I've got about uh, 28 and eight. It's already cut at 70. I, cut, I made the 70 uh, cut. So it's 70 inches in between those rails. So I'm just going to put my chalk line on here and give myself a straight line. A lot of people just use like a carpet knife or something like that. I know it never works for me. I know this is overkill, but I get a pretty straight line and it doesn't hurt the saw at all. So that's what we're gonna do. to the curving, I will use my carpet knife to kerf because I know about halfway up I gotta make the bend. This doesn't bend. It's rigid. It's in its name. So I'm gonna give it just a little one down here. This is just a matter of making some lines and then giving it one of these. That's a kerf. Now I'm gonna give it a bunch of them right here. because the back is where the bed is. We wanna make sure we cover everything up. So I just give it, give it the old ones over there. Just keep going like this. It's not a big bend, that curve back there, but extra curving isn't going to hurt anything. We'll make it fit nice and tight. That way you'll be nice and warm or cold or whatever you want to be when you're sleeping. And I think that ought to do it. Look at that curve we can get. Whee! All right, let's attach that. Ooh. 
you don't want to snug this up as much as you can. Hey, we got a little too much on the top here. Just because that bend, when it bends, it separates and it makes it a little bit longer. And I brought my little knife here. And well, we're not but a really about an eighth off in a couple of spots. Which is okay because it's gonna make it a lot tighter when it slips. See how that one slips it. Whoop. That's not enough. Some of those pieces didn't pop out. There we go. We can just kind of follow this little line right here. We can use that as our cutting edge. So I brought a little tape with me. Because sometimes on these curves, it's just not going to lay down for you. We'll just kind of tape it up a little bit so that it stays on there until we get our skin put on. It's not going to hurt anything to have some tape on there. Man, that is... Whew. Let's see what happens if we put another kerf right here. That might just be the problem. Let's get a little kerf going. There we go, we'll take this tape off real quick. See if that didn't solve our problem. Yeah, we're a little high down here. That's all right, not anymore. A little bit right there. Boy, that was terrible, terrible. So that's gonna sit in there. I'm gonna do a better job of measuring on the next one, rest assured. I don't want you to think a uh, Boy Scout with a rusty hatchet did that, because I'm not a Boy Scout. Rusty hatchet. Anyway, what I would normally do on this deal is I would put the top rail all the way over and then I would install this, but I kind of wanted to show you where I'm going with it. And then I'm going to finish up the rest of this. You're not going to have to watch it, but I'll give you a better idea of what it looks like when I get done. Hey, can I show you something? I got the roof unrolled. I'm kind of letting it lay on here. Hey, you can see. I got that in there and that'll just, oh, great camera work. That'll just smush right in there when I uh, nail it down, screw it down, staple it down, whatever you do. And uh, just wanted to show you, it's gonna lay down pretty good. I'm gonna put some straps on it really and uh, really stretch it out, make sure it finds its right place. Now that's not the most interesting video in the world, but I wanted to show it to you, but I wanna show you something else. Can I show you something else? Because I don't know that I've ever shown you this. So as we look up here, that's where these two pieces come together. Now all those little swirls, I'll sand that down and give it another coat of shellac. Oh, there we go. So when you put your two ceiling pieces together, they're not going to match exactly. And they don't have to. But we've got to put some trim in there. And there'll be a little bit of trim uh, above the... There's a really good shot. I got a new phone. Remember a few videos back, I was complaining so much. And they forced me into a new phone. But it looks good, so I got to get that trimmed out. And I used to go to the big box store and buy trim. I'm like, well, this is in the trim department. I guess I'll buy trim. This stuff was so expensive. Until one day, I'm just like making these top rail pieces. Remember our top rail? Right there, that we just kind of make four, five, six of them and nail them together to make our top rail. And I like, hey, that that looks good enough to be trim. Well, that's all I do. I go over there, whoop, over there, and uh, I put put them on the uh, table saw at one and a quarter, 
And this is the same thing we use on the interior. So it's gonna shellac really nicely. And you'll have as long of a piece as you need because this is only 70 wide, I think, on the interior. So I've got my amber shellac out. I'm gonna shellac these and make them look pretty. And then anywhere that you see a crease, there's gonna be some trim, even in here. Now it's not structural. This is structural. This is structural, not structural. So it's just going to be for looks. We want it to be pretty. So I'm gonna, or even in here, there's a, there's some right there. Structural, structural, not structural. So it'll be fine. It's gonna look beautiful. Let's have a potty. All right, I'm gonna get this shellac. difference just that quick so I know there's several of you on here working on look how dirty my face is I was undercoating earlier camera ready anyway if I can give you a tip on this I would tell you I just can't get over how dirty my face is it's terrible Anyway, my tip is when you are putting this trim up on the ceiling, take a little extra time on that one. That's what you're going to notice the most. You might think, oh no, I walk in, I'm going to, I'm going to think about the kitchen cabinet. I'll see that all the time. Or I'll see this or I'll see, no. When you're laying in bed at night or you're relaxing in a nap, you got nothing better to do than stare at the ceiling. There we go. Make sure that that is fully shellacked and you'll be much happier. You'll be much happier with a clean face, good solid shellac job, and you can take your nap in peace. <laughs>